The signs warn you of the dangers ahead. This belt of southeast Israel is a potential firing zone and a training ground for the Israeli military. And we are headed to not one, but two different borders at a time of war. So Eli, where are we now? We are now very close to uh, south of Gaza. We're talking about Rafah, the north area that we've been all the time. This is the area of Kibbutz Berry. Yeah. Okay, we are now in the south, the area that the Israeli army asked from the uh, citizen of Gaza to go to the south side. We're going to be very close to the border with Gaza. If you see number 10 here, this is the border with Egypt. Right. That the border with Egypt crossing here in the south of Israel, we are going now to the west, to the sea, and we're going to this uh, 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 Moshav. Uh, it's the cooperative, Talme Yosef. We're going to try to meet some people that they are still there. This is Khanyones, this is Rafah. Right. And we are going close to Rafah. Okay, on we go. We drive on deserted narrow roads through the sand and barren fields, past multiple police and military checkpoints and walls of concrete and barbed wire. And an hour later, we are at the southeastern tip of Israel. We are a few kilometers away from both Egypt's Rafah crossing and the Gaza border. Egypt, which built a concrete wall all along its 12-kilometer border with Gaza in 2020, has finally opened its gates for humanitarian aid, food, water and fuel. But here on the Israel side, in the area known as Karem Shalom, which ironically means the vineyard of peace, both borders, Gaza and Egypt, are equidistant, as if to remind the universe that all things, people and countries, are interconnected even in the age of war. At this moment, we are standing at a very, very critical, but also very, very interesting place. We are not too far from the border with Egypt, and we're not too far from the border with Gaza. We're literally at the corner of both of these borders. And remember, Egypt, from the Egyptian side, is where Israel has agreed that humanitarian aid can enter Gaza as long as it's not going to the Hamas. Gaza is, of course, where the actual war is unfolding. We're literally at the corner of both of these borders, and I have Ivan here uh, to tell us a little bit more about where we are. So we're going to take a little walk uh, okay. in this very beautiful neighborhood, except for the fact that this beautiful neighborhood, just now in the distance, I could hear the sound of firing, uh, also helicopters in the sky, because remember again, we are very close to Gaza, but at the same time, we are also close to Egypt. Tell us where we are. Um, at the moment, as you correctly said, we're in the corner of two borders. The Egyptian border, which is exactly eight kilometers from here to the south, and the Gaza Strip, the border with the Gaza Strip, which is exactly seven kilometers um, from where we are standing now. So it's the corner of both the two uh, sort of uh, borders that are making global headlines today. Correct. Gaza Correct. and Egypt. Correct. And uh, uh, you know, today, these days you, you hear a sound and you think it's a tank. But it's actually only a tractor only tractors. Uh, that goes that's going by. This is a farming community, a cooperative of farming f farmers. Yes. But tell us more. So eight kilometers from Egypt to this. Exactly eight kilometers from Egypt. Now the interesting thing is that uh, this moshav, which is called Tal Yosef. Yeah. Um, and I can have the camera just show us behind. It looks like a very peaceful neighborhood. It is. But it's sitting in the center uh, of a war zone right now. Correct. Right, but to yeah. go back a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Yosef was actually established in the Sinai yeah. uh, in Egypt mm -hmm. in uh, the late 70s. And as part of the peace treaty, we actually went there, my family and I, mm -hmm. went there to join a moshav called Tal Yosef. We were 30 families. Um, we became excellent farmers with uh, high technology in uh, agriculture. And in 1981, we moved to this area because Israel had made a peace agreement with Egypt and the mm -hmm. conditions were that Israel would move across from the Sinai back into the border with Israel. Right. Uh, there was nothing when we arrived here. We were only 15 families that moved here. Sand, 
electricity and water, empty. sand, Come sand. Wow. Nobody had stood here before. Yeah. Yeah. So don't be deceived by what you are seeing, you by what so you are green. seeing now. So, green, right? so that was in yeah. 1981. Yeah. And they gave the name of this area this new area where other six other settlements were established, they gave the name the Peace Belt. Well, how ironic. Hevel, Hevel Shalom. Uh, we've been now 42 years we've been living here. We've uh, created a uh, family. Uh, there are four generations living here. My mother-in-law, my wife, Sarah, and myself, four daughters uh, with their families and nine grandchildren. None of them are here now. Just Sarah and I here. We evacuated everyone so to everybody safer areas. So mostly left this place. Um, the young people have left with their children and grandchildren. It was absolutely impossible to remain uh, with them here with the threat. We could hear it happening. We could practically see it happening. Yeah. Only a kilometer away from here uh, is our neighbor, Moshav Prigan, where the terrorists actually infiltrated. Uh, no one was abducted. No one uh, of the members mm -hmm. was uh, harmed, so to speak. But three of the uh, emergency task force civilians yeah. um, that tried to protect them were killed. Um, Tell me, it's so yeah. ironic uh, that you're in the sort of epicenter, as it were, of not just the Gaza belt where the war is unfolding, but also Egypt, Correct. Uh, which Sorry. is in the headlines because it's going to be the route for, through which aid would enter for the civilians Correct. in Gaza. Correct. On the day of the actual attack, yes. the terrorists drove past the gates of this, uh, this Correct. Attempt, didn't they? Yes. Uh, as I said before, our can, our, can, you can show us in that direction. Okay, yeah. our neighboring yeah. our neighboring settlement, Mushav Prigan. Yeah, you could practically see it. You just can see enemy. our gate. That's yeah. our gate. Yeah. And about just under a kilometer. Yes. Down the road there. Yes. Is their gate. Yes. They were infiltrated. We could hear it. The, the shooting was going on and on and on. We didn't know exactly what was happening, but we got messages from people that were locked in their uh, safe rooms. What happened though, after they had done what they did there, they went back. Right. The terrorists went back the way they came from the Gaza Strip, from the 232, which is the main artery, the main road. But then from the circle, which is basically the circle uh, a little bit away from here, that is the circle of all our uh, settlements or most of the settlements yeah. here, uh, a whole lot of them came on motorbikes, yeah. heavily armed. This is the Hamas. This is the Hamas. Yeah. Uh, we'll call them ISIS, yes. brutal terrorists. Yes. And you can see the yellow gate. That's our entrance gate. Yeah, that's gate. right there. The that's end. our entrance gate. Yeah. 300 meters from there, they drove along there and across yeah. and basically crossed 300 meters in front of our gate. Went on to another Moshav in the area and there And we the, just heard as we were talking to you the sound of explosions in the distance yeah, very near Gaza and Egypt. It bears but that, that I'm pleased to say is actually uh, Israel uh, firing. our artillery. Yes. yes so yes, Israel firing. Yeah. But yet nevertheless it tells nevertheless, you you're in the war zone. You heard a little earlier on uh, a helicopter yes. uh, in the distance Distance. There was uh, shots explosions. fired. Yeah. There were shots fired. I don't know exactly what it is. It's closer to the border, um, a little bit closer. And uh, this yeah. is what we've been living with for the last two weeks. Let me ask you, since yes. you live in the, what's called the peace belt, yes, uh, and we're hearing explosions as we're talking to you, it's probably Israeli artillery fire pounding uh, Hamas targets in Gaza. Again, Correct. we're standing at a very unusual intersection, a corner Correct. of Gaza and Egypt borders, both Correct. very close. Uh, Egypt, the entry point for uh, humanity in aid, Gaza, the front line of Israel's war on Hamas, uh, on Gaza. Uh, my question to you is this. Do you think peace can come after what's happened since we're in the peace belt? You know, we don't have much choice because um, this is where we live. Yeah. You know, we left the, we left, uh, the Sinai uh, so that peace could come around. Okay. Yeah. We moved here. This land 
only belongs to us. Yeah. There is no Palestinian claim on this land. There can be no Palestinian claim. We came here and created um, a family unit of four generations, like I said. Mm -hmm. We are four generations here. So let's say, all right, they have massacred our neighbors a little bit closer to the Gaza Strip. Now, where should I go? I actually uh, um, immigrated and my wife Sarah immigrated and a lot of people on this Moshav mm -hmm. came to Israel because this is the home of the Jewish people. I came from a country which is today called Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was Rhodesia at the time. My wife came from South Africa. We have no claims from those countries. We came here to build what we could with our friends and our neighbors and we've done it successfully. But what have we done wrong? You know, we have never, living here, we have never had animosity towards our neighbors. We came here for peace. Yeah. Now, if the question is, will there be peace? Then it means our whole existence yeah. is being questioned because what do we do now? Pack up our bags and move I, to where? I, 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 to Tel Aviv or to Haifa because that's next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you yes. this. There's a lot of debate over how Hamas is not Palestine, right? Uh, the Palestinian people are not all Hamas supporters. No, correct. Gazan civilians correct. are not all Hamas correct. supporters. Correct. What is the way for Israel to have the right to retaliation without hundreds of thousands of Gazan civilians who are not Hamas supporters being impacted? Correct. But before that, yes. you've probably seen the footage yes, of, course. of what happened, that it wasn't only armed terrorists so that civilians, came through. Really civilians came through. I'm actually getting uh, goose, goosebumps. goosebumps now yeah. when I remember seeing what yeah. I saw. Yes. And they came and they did horrific things. And these were civilians. They came on their bicycles. They came with donkeys and carts, etc. So we have to somehow separate between the innocent people there and here. But at the moment, I don't have the leisure. We don't have the leisure to start sorting out who is what. What Israel has done, though, is has told and warned innocent civilians, move south. That's where there will be humanitarian aid. Move south. Separate yourselves from the terrorists. Yeah. You are not our targets. But anybody who remains will be considered either, to use a strong word, collateral damage or not, they may be harmed. But it's them or us. And today I don't have, we don't have the leisure of uh, saying, well, okay, uh, identify yourselves as anti-Hamas or pro-Hamas, and then we'll deal with you accordingly. Yeah. We have to do what we have to do. And let's not forget our hostages that are there now. About 200 of them. Right. And uh, that is a very problematic situation. Ivan, thank you for talking to us. As we've been talking to Ivan, we hear the sound of explosions. It has something to do with where we are. Remember, we've been right up to the front line, but this is a very unique place at the corner of the Egypt and the Gaza borders. And therefore, what we've heard uh, behind us is the sound of artillery, probably the Israeli artillery. In fact, our experience at the border tells us the rockets come in from the Gaza side. Many of them are intercepted by the Iron Dome. Some that aren't fall and then the Israelis return artillery fire. The Israeli defense minister now on record uh, to say that that the troops here will soon see the inside of the Gaza, uh, Gaza Strip. In other words, green lighting the ground assault, which could be imminent. Reporting from an intersection of the Egypt and Gaza border with the help of Ivan here and with cameraman Anoop. This is Barkhadat for Mojo Story.